welcome to my channel. My name is Samantha. I am a new homeschooling mom of four kiddos. I have one going into fifth, third, and first grade, and then my little guy is one. In today's video today, I have for you what we are going to be reading aloud throughout the school year. Um, it took me a while to figure out exactly which books I wanted to purchase because um, I really wanted to find literature or stories, um, books of that sort that had more characters that my kids could relate to. Um, so my husband is actually part Korean and I am part African American and Hispanic. So as you know, there aren't a lot of books that have characters that um, my kids see that um, are like them. And so it's really interesting. I saw a chart come out about a week or so ago that was shared on social media and the, um, and it had a breakdown of what, of diversity in books. And um, as you may know, white Caucasians um, make up the larger majority of characters in books. Then it was animals. Then it was um, African Americans and then Latinx and then Asian. And so it was really important for me um, to do the best job that I could to find as many diverse books as I could. And I will continue with that every year in our homeschool. Um, so I think I have a really good bunch of books here. Um, I'm pretty sure if we do about one book a month, we can get through all of these. Um, some are shorter than others, so it may not be exactly one per month. It might, we might end one a little bit earlier, start one a little bit, or end one earlier, end one later. Um, so we'll just see how it goes throughout the school year. So the first book that I got is Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. And I can go ahead and read the back of these. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure many of you have actually heard of this one because this is one that both my husband and I did read in school. Um, but I'll just read the back of all of them so that you know um, kind of where I'm coming from when choosing these to purchase. Humiliation and fear seem to rule the lives of Cassie, Logan, and her family, but they have one thing that no one can take away, their land. And with that to hold them together, nothing can tear them apart. The vivid story shows the rich inner rewards of black pride, love, and independence. So I'm really excited to read this to my kids. Then we have The Kite Fighters. And this one says, As the second son, young Sup, knows his duty to assist his older brother's key Sup, whatever they do, key Sup represents the family. He gets the privileges and responsibilities. Young Sup gets to help. That's the way it's always been. The boys discover kite fighting. Young Sup is good. He's better than good. He's better than Key Sup. Key Sup's talents lie in building a kite, fashioning wood and paper to withstand any wind. But it's Young Sup who can feel what the kite wants to do. With the New Year Festival coming up, the boys set their sights on the kite fights. Given their combined talents, they could win. But tradition through the stern voice of their father says Key Sup must fly the kite. If he does, they'll surely lose. Kite fighting means so much to both boys, especially young Sup, who sees a chance to prove himself. But how do you stand up against what's always been? And so this is um, a story about two Korean brothers and their family. Then we have Lucky Broken Girl. And this one says, when Ruthie Mizrahi moves with her family from home, from her homeland of Cuba to the bustling streets of New York, it's a, it's a lot to take in. New sights, new sounds, and new language. But Ruthie is adjusting. She's already mastering English and, English and has made some new friends. But then Ruthie's in a car accident and she ends up in a body cast that stretches all the way from her chest to her toes. Just when she was starting to feel like life in New York would be okay, now she'll have to lie in bed for months and be treated like a baby again. Then all kinds of interesting people start visiting, bringing stories and gifts, and suddenly she starts to feel like everything might be okay after all. Then we have Inside Out and Back Again. This one says, For all the ten years of her life, Ha has only known Saigon. The thrills of its markets, the joys of its traditions, the warmth of her friends close by, and the beauty of her very own papaya tree. But now the Vietnam War has reached her home. 
Ha and her family are forced to flee as Saigon falls and they board a ship headed toward hope. This is the moving story of one girl's year of change, dreams, grief, and healing as she journeys from one country to another, one life to the next. And then I have actually seen this book recommended from a few different people, um, a few different bloggers that have posted um, diverse books and also here on YouTube. So I was really excited to get to I was really excited to get this one because I've actually never read it myself. However, my daughter going into the third grade has read it and she says it's really good. So the rest of us are excited for it. And that is One Crazy Summer. And it says, set during one of the most tumultuous years in recent American history, One Crazy Summer is heartbreaking is the heartbreaking tale of the three girls who traveled to Oakland, California in 1968 in search of the mother who abandoned them. It is an unforgettable story told by a distinguished author of books for children and teens, and teens, Rita Williams Garcia. Then we got The Sign of the Beaver, and this is also another one that I've seen recommended um, in a few different places. And so I'll just read the, this one has a little bit longer, so I'll just read the first half. Although he faces his responsibility bravely, 13-year-old Matt is more than a little apprehensive when his father leaves him alone to guard their newly built cabin in the wilderness. When a, renegade, when a renegade white stranger steals his gun, Matt realizes he has no way to shoot game and no way to protect himself. It is only after meeting the resource, resourceful Indian boy, Atian, that Matt begins to discover new ways to survive in the forest. So that will be really good. And then another that we have is When My Name Was Kyoko. And so this one is When Her Name Was Kyoko, Japan Owned Korea. When Her Name Was Kyoko, Japanese soldiers ordered people around telling them what they could do or say, even what sort of flowers they could grow. When Her Name Was Kyoko, World War II came to Korea, and her friends and relatives had to work and fight for Japan. When her name was Kyoki, Kyoko, she never forgot her name was actually Kim Sun Hee. And no matter what she was called, she was Korean, not Japanese. And so I thought this was real. I thought this was a really good book because my husband has actually told me a little bit of history. Um, between Korea and Japan. That's not something that we learn much of so I think it'll be really fun to one read this book with my kids and then two um, be able to do more research on our own on side of it and um, learn a little bit more Korean history. So the next book that I got is um, Call It Courage and this says Mafatu's name means stout heart but his people call him a coward. Ever since the sea took his mother's life and spared his own, he has lived with a deep fear. And even though his father is the great chief of Haikuru, an island whose seafaring people worship courage, he is terrified, and so they hate him. By the time he is 15 years old, Mafatu can bear it no longer. He must conquer his fear, his fear alone, even if it means certain death. And then next, I have heard rave reviews on this book, so I'm really excited for it. Um, and this is Esperanza Rising. And it says, Esperanza believed her life would be wonderful forever. She would always live on her family's ranch in Mexico. She would always have fancy dresses and a beautiful home filled with servants. Papa and Abuelita would always be with her. But a sudden tra tragedy shatters her world and, fo and forces Esperanza and Mama to flee to California, where they settle in a camp for Mexican farm workers. Esperanza isn't ready for the hard labor, financial struggles brought on by the Great Depression and lack of acceptance she now faces. When Mama gets sick and, and a strike for better working conditions threatens the uproot of their new life, Esperanza must find a way to rise above her difficult circumstances because Mama's life and her own depend on it. That sounds really good. I can't wait. That might be our first read aloud. I'm not sure. They all sound really good though. And then the last book that I got is The um, Birch Bark House. And this one says Omakaya's. I'm so sorry. I do not know how to say her name. 
Omakayas and her family live on the land her people call the island of the golden breasted woodpecker. Although the Chumu Komen or white people encroach more and more on their land, life continues much as it always has. Every summer they build a new birch bark house. Every fall they go to rice and camp to harvest and feast. They move to the cedar log house before the first snows arrive and celebrate the end of the long cold winters at Maple Sugaring Camp. In between Omakaya's fights with her annoying little brother Pinch, plays with the new adorable baby Niwo, and tries to be grown up like her big sister Angeline. But the satisfying rhythms of their life are shattered when a visitor comes to their lodge one winter night bringing with them an invisible enemy that will change things forever, but that will eventually eventually lead Omakaya's to discovering her calling. By turns, moving and humorous, this novel is a breathtaking tour de force by a gifted writer. So, this also sounds really good. And I found all of these books on Amazon um, and they were all available, no problem. And so, if you have any recommendations on books that I should add into my homeschool that you have read with your kids that you think are really good, um, that are diverse, please let me know in the comments down below. And I hope that you will read some of these books either this next school year at, or at some point you can add them into your homeschool. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you soon. Bye. Thank you.